Welcome to the Big D Breakdown. I'm your host, Larry Lease. In today's episode, we're diving into the latest headlines from around the Dallas Cowboys. But first, a word from our sponsors. Today's episode is sponsored by Game Time. Life's too short for boring weekends. That's where Game Time comes in. Game Time is the go to app for last minute tickets to all your favorite events from thrilling sporting games and captivating concerts to unforgettable theater performances. They've got it all covered. Get the best seats at the best price right at your fingertips instantly. No more waiting in lines. No more exorbitant ticket prices. So why wait? Experience the magic of the moment with Game Time. Live for the now. Game Time. Your your ticket to a fantastic time. Use the link in the description and you can help support the channel when you buy your tickets to your next event. Before we dive into today's episode... We'd like to remind you, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Just search The Big D Breakdown. And of course, give us a thumbs up on our video if you like our content. And without further ado, let's dive right into today's topics. Starting off with, there are three burning questions on defense and special teams the Cowboys must answer during training camp. The Cowboys are less than one month away from taking the field and not start for training camp. Cowboys' first team practice is Wednesday, July 26th. Fans already got their first look at some new faces during Maney Camp in May and June. Stephon Gilmore was seen in a Dallas practice uniform, and Brandon Cooks was catching long passes from quarterback Dak Prescott. There are still many question marks as the team heads into training camp, including on offense, defense, and special teams. Training camp should answer a bunch of those unanswered offseason questions, Players will win starting jobs, players will get more reps with the first team than others, and new players will come in and try to earn a roster spot. These are three burning questions on defense and special teams that Cowboys must answer during training camp. Starting off with number three, how long will Jordan Lewis be out? Jordan Lewis suffered a season-ending this Frank injury in week seven and will likely start training camp on the physically unable to perform list. Not unusual to see Lewis start on camp or camp on the sidelines as he works his way back from a foot injury. The recovery timeline for an injury he has is between nine and 12 months. The end of July puts the cornerback around the nine, nine month time frame. But just how much of him will we see in training camp? The end of August will put the corner back around the 10th month recovery timeline. He still might not be ready to play by then. Ravens wide receiver Rashad Bateman suffered a similar injury in week eight, but he's expected to be ready for Ravens camp. There is a likely chance that Lewis will miss the entirety of training camp, and maybe even the first couple of weeks of the season. Cowboys are already thin at cornerback, so they hope to get him back soon. The good news is, that De'Ron Bland will likely see first-team reps. The Cowboys' 2022 fifth-round rookie was excellent as a rookie. Bland had five interceptions, seven passes collected, and 54 tackles in 17 games last season. He started eight games and played 90% of the team's snaps in five of those contests. Most of his damage came after Lewis suffered the season-ending injury. Whether Lewis or Bland starts in the slot this season remains a question mark. That question probably won't be answered during training camp due to the veteran's injury. Either way, a healthy Lewis is a good thing. He'll give the Cowboys much-needed flexibility in their quarterback room. Because behind Trayvon Diggs, Gilmar and Bland are rookie Eric Scott Jr., Deshaun Wright, and Kelvin Joseph. Number two, how much playing time will Sam Williams see in year two? Sam Williams was Dallas's second-round pick last year, and he showed up a ton of potential in his rookie season. Williams had four sacks, 22 tackles, nine quarterback hits, and forced one fumble in 15 games. His best game came in Week 7 against the Lions when he had two sacks, three tackles, two quarterback hits, and a forced fumble on 14 snaps. He didn't see much playing time in his rookie season, only playing more than 25 snaps in just three games. But when given the opportunity, Williams stepped up. He finished fifth in the Defensive Player of the Year voting in 2022. Now heading into year two, the Cowboys expect big things from the second-year edge rusher. Head coach Mike McCarthy has raved about Williams this offseason and has noticed 
a year or two jump already. It's encouraging to see Dallas say great things about the 24-year-old, especially after a solid rookie campaign. But how will Williams fit in on defense? Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons will be locked in as the team's top two edge rushers. Both also deserve to be in the game on almost every snap. Parsons has at least 13 snaps in back-to-back seasons, and Lawrence is a veteran who always seems to get in the backfield. So Williams might fail to play a ton of snaps to see a massive year two jump. He'll surely be the backup to Lawrence, but just how much he will play in 2023 remains to be seen. Training camp will be a key determination in seeing just how Dallas plans to unleash second year edge rusher. Number one, who's the Cowboys starting kicker? It's July and the Cowboys now have two kickers on the roster after they signed USFL standout Brandon Aubrey and the Birmingham Stallions. Aubrey nailed 14 of 15 field goals this season, including going perfect from inside 50 and made all 35 of his extra point attempts. If the season started today, Tristan Piscano would be Dallas' starting kicker against the Giants in Week 1. He was signed to the Cowboys practice squad in the playoffs after Brett Maher's extra point blunder. He has bounced around in the NFL in his first three seasons, had a stint with the 49ers in 2020, Chargers in 2021, and the Cardinals and Patriots last year. The 26-year-old kicker has hit 11 of 12 field goals and 50, 15 of 20 extra points in his career. The numbers aren't terrible by any means, though his 75% conversion rate from extra points from extra points, needs some serious improvement. It'll be interesting to see how he performs in training camp, and whether Aubrey can supplement him as the favorite to start week one. If not, don't be shocked if the Cowboys pivot to a Robbie Gould or a Mason Crosby. They're still available. And next up, one crucial offensive adjustment the Cowboys must make without Dylan Moore. The Cowboys' offense will be better off if they make this one major adjustment. Just about everyone is expecting a bounce-back season from Dak Prescott. Not all of Prescott's league-leading 15 inter- interceptions were his fault. Poor route running, drop passes, and miscommunication with a receiver led to at least a handful of picks. But even the quarterback recognizes he needs to take better care of the football. There are a number of factors that should allow Prescott to improve as a passer. For starters, McCarthy is installing the Texas Coast offense, a revised version of Kellen Moore's scheme, while Brandon Cooks gives the offense a proven number two receiver, and more is expected of Michael Gallup and Jalen Tolbert. One potential hurdle Prescott and the offense have to clear is that there's no true short yardage back to replace Ezekiel Elliott. Giving Prescott more looks as a runner seems like an obvious solution, right? Well, in McCarthy's three years, as Cowboys head coach, Prescott has just 12 rushing attempts and 192 plays in goal-to-go situations. According to Warren Sharp of Sharp Football Analytics, Prescott averaged just over 15 rushing yards per game last season. and logged three carries on goal-to-goal downs, which ranked 23rd among quarterbacks. These stats, including, are extremely damning. While Moore ultimately called the shots on offense, and Zeke was a beast in short yardage and goal line situations, McCarthy should recognize as head coach that the offense needs more balance and should utilize one of its forgotten weapons when knocking on the door of the end zone. Prescott hasn't been been asked to run much since his devastating ankle injury, but he's now two full seasons removed from the injury. While we shouldn't expect him to run with the same vigor and elusiveness as he did early in his career, he undoubtedly she should see an uptick in design runs. Remember how pivotal it proved in Dallas's 2018 playoff win against the Seahawks? Remember Prescott's one-yard rushing touchdown on fourth and goal in the second quarter of the Cowboys' wildcard win over the Buccaneers? How many times have we seen Prescott lower his shoulder and carry linebackers and defensive backs several yards? At 6'2 and 238 pounds, he has the profile of a quarterback who should be scoring five to seven rushing touchdowns per year. Incredibly, though, Prescott has just two rushing touchdowns the last two seasons and eight total since the 2019 season. Mind you, the two-time Pro Bowler notched six rushing scores in each of his first three years in the league. 
Nobody's saying the Cowboys should make Prescott their featured ball carrier in goal to go situations. But what's wrong with mixing it up? It'll keep defenses second guessing and open up more passing lanes in the tight red zone. Hopefully, McCarthy recognizes this and adjusts accordingly with more Allen LA. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. What do you think about the Cowboys uh, training camp needs? And how do you see Prescott handling the upcoming season? And now we're going to address three significant questions that the Cowboys have at tight end. As the Cowboys are set to leave for training camp later this month, the team will field different questions regarding different areas of the roster. One position group that they may be asked about will be the tight end unit. Only a little questioning was needed in years past, as the Cowboys have had surefire starters for many years at the position. Names like Iron Mike Ditka, Security Blanket, and Jay Novakek, future Hall of Famer Jason Witten, and even the last two seasons with Dalton Schultz. Now in 2023, a new face will assume the starting position, but even going past the topic of who starts, the team won't have to answer multiple questions on how the group will shape up for the upcoming season. So we're going to examine three important questions for the Cowboys' tent and group. Number three, who is undrafted free agent Princeton Fant? And should fans be excited about him? At 24 years old, coming out of the University of Tennessee, Princeton Fant went undrafted in a 2023 NFL draft. While the tight end room is crowded going to camp, there are spots to be earned on the active roster and practice squad. Who is the former volunteer and what does he bring? Fant spent six seasons with the volunteers. He appeared in 33 games and totaled 52 receptions, more than 500 yards and five touchdowns. His uh, versatility was on display in his final season, accounting for nine total scores. Three receiving, five rushing, and one passing. All while helping lead Tennessee to an 11-2 record and a number six finish in the country. While making a 53-man roster is a challenge for an undrafted free agent, the Cowboys see something in Fant and the skill set that is good enough to give him a chance at making the team. Number two. Can Peyton Hendershot retain his spot on the roster? Similar to Fant, the Cowboys added Peyton Hendershot after the draft. Just like an uh, undrafted free agent. The former Indiana product surprised many by making the 53 and seeing significant playtime. Hendershot played in all 17 games as a rookie and had a pair of starts. He finished his rookie season with 11 receptions for 103 yards and two touchdowns and one rushing touchdown. Still, while the experience of the system is there, competition for what are likely three spots on the active roster and one on the practice squad will be a challenge with multiple newcomers at a battle for the starting spot. And if not, we'll have to show the coaches why he belongs again with hopefully a mistake-free camp. And number one, who will win the starting job, Jake Ferguson or Luke Shoemaker? The battle for the top spot will likely come down to last year's rookie and now second-year man, Jake Ferguson. Newly drafted second-round pick out of Michigan, Luke Shoemaker. Today in Dallas, competition for starting tight end is rare. Maybe the biggest position battle that tight ends coach, offensive coordinate, coordinator Brian Schottenheimer, and head coach Mike McCarthy will have to determine who can fill it in the shoes of Dalton Schultz, with whom quarterback Dak Prescott had a good connection. Ferguson, in his rookie season, was the backup to Schultz. He played 16 games and had eight starts as a rookie. He finished the season with 19 receptions for 174 yards and two touchdowns. Earlier this year, during the Chiefs' Super Bowl press conference, Ferguson caught the attention of one of the best tight ends ever, Travis Kelsey. Staying, quote, there are a few great tight ends out there, Kelsey said. I don't know if there are any that remind me of myself, but there are a few guys I'm excited about. Kyle Pitts at the Falcons being one of them, Jake Ferguson down in Dallas, Daniel Bellinger over in New York. I'm excited to see how these guys manifest over the next few years, and we'll see where they can take their game. The second-year player was invited and attended the Tight End University Summit in June, run by multiple great tight ends, including Kelsey. Overall, Ferguson is in a great position to step up and become Prescott's security blanket. 
after the departure of the previous starter, Dalton Schultz, who is now in Houston, the Cowboys knew they had to invest in a replacement option. An investment was made in the second round of the 2023 draft, Michigan's Luke Shoemaker. He brings multiple traits that should make him a nice addition to depth. His athleticism and ability to run block will benefit an offense emphasizing running the ball more this season. While his production lacked in the passing game, 54 receptions, 637 yards, and 7 touchdowns, stats don't tell the full picture. The film study does. And it's clear that William McClay and company were impressed with the tape. While Ferguson might be the favorite to start, given the one year of experience in the system, this will likely become a season-long battle to determine who could be the potential starter in the long run. And now on to our next topic. An ESPN writer makes a compelling case for this player as Cowboys X Factor. There's an obvious pick for whom the Cowboys 2023 X Factor will be. Dallas Cowboys have one of the best rosters in the NFL. Regardless of the out- outlet, the Cowboys have consistently ranked within the top 10, usually just outside the top 5 in 2023 roster rankings. Similarly, Several players have ranked among the hierarchy at their respected position, including Micah Parsons, C.D. Lamb, and Trayvon Dix. That doesn't begin to encapsulate the talent on this roster. With ample high-level talent, it would be easy for impact players to get glossed over. More importantly, it makes it that much more difficult to identify possible X-factors and breakout players. Recently, Pro Football Focus named Malik Hooker as Dallas's most underrated player, and Jake Ferguson as the team's breakout candidate. You could certainly argue for other players in those spots, but Hooker and Ferg were worthy picks. That begs the question of whom the Cowboys' X Factor is. ESPN's Seth Walder believes Stephon Gilmore deserves to carry that mantle. Stephon Gilmore, the Cowboys' biggest X-Factor this season? Hard to disagree. Gilmore can maintain the level of play he showcased in Indianapolis last year. There's no telling what the ceiling uh, of the Cowboys' defense will be. Already a consensus top five unit, they'll have the potential to leapfrog the 49ers as the premier defense in the league. It stands to reason that Gilmore should maintain that form too considering he'll likely match up against the opposition's secondary receiver. That assumes Trayvon Diggs bears the responsibility of covering opposing teams to number one wide, wide out. Gilmore was a targeted often on the Colts, but more than held his own as a number one corner. He allowed a lowly 82.6 passer rating in coverage and had an 81.1 coverage grade to show for it. That made Gilmore one of four defenders to rank in the top 15 of PFF's coverage grades over the last two seasons. Additionally, Gilmore allowed just the 64.3% completion rate over 82 targets and made two game clinching pass breakups. Of course, there's always potential for Gilmore to begin to show his age. He's entering his age 33 season, and he played a combined 19 games spanning the 2020 and 2021 seasons before playing 16 games for the Colts last year. While Mike Lane Vanderish, Michael Gallup, and Tyron Smith are honorable mentions for the Cowboys 2023 X Factor, we're hard pressed to push back on Walder's Gilmore pick. Gilmore continues performing at a high level and can elevate the Cowboys defense to the championship caliber group. If he regresses, Dan Quinn's unit will have unwelcome questions to answer at cornerback. Nobody else on the roster carries that much influence. And now we're going to take a look at five free agents that Cowboys should have on standby. The Dallas Cowboys could still jump in the free agents agency pool, and these five players could be good candidates. With training camp just a mere weeks away, it's highly unlikely that Cowboys will make any significant roster moves before now and then. That doesn't mean they can't stand to upgrade the roster by adding a few experienced veterans to the mix via free agency. It just means they will likely wait to see how things play out in a training camp first. While the Cowboys may be taking a wait-and-see approach in training camp before exploring the free agent market, 
He should be preparing ahead of time if and when that time does come. With that in mind, we're going to take a look at a handful of free agents who Dallas should have on standby for when they go do decide to strike. Starting off with left guard Dahl Risner. The only thing we really know right now about the left side of Dallas' offensive line is that Tyler Smith will start at either left guard or tackle. Considering he was drafted to be Tyron Smith's eventual replacement at left tackle, the idea, ideal scenario would be for him to go ahead and take over that role full-time, entering year two with the Cowboys. That, however, leaves a vacancy at left guard. This is where Dalton Risner comes into play. Former second-round pick of the Broncos and best interior offensive lineman available on the open market. He would be a play plug-and-play starter from day one. Dallas would be Next wise up, to have his number on speed dial if and when the need of biggest concern to get a bona fide starter right now. Left guard. So who is going to be the place kicker? Next up, tight end Cameron Brait. Tristan is standing stand right now. The Cowboys are going younger and cheaper at tight end from USFL. 23. Neither, neither said Ferguson and inspire much confidence. Two maker are expected to battle it out. Which is why replacement still leave no stun to so former starter Dalton Schultz. And more the Peyton Hendershot possibly Tommy Keaton rounding right up now. Depth, Robbie up Gould the depth. Robbie Gould is the best kicker available. Due to the lack of proven experience, though, he's been one of the most reliable kickers in the league. Might not be a bad idea. Despite getting up former Tampa Bay Buccaneers tight end Cameron Bray to be on the Dallas no doubt being upgraded in Dallas. He's a solid yeah, player who has proven that he's more than capable of being in the position in the training locker in the running game otherwise, cool and as a receiving threat in the past. Game. And finally, the youth movement at tight end raises any and concerns at any point throughout training camp. Is someone the Cowboys should absolutely be on coming off a season ending injury and taking on the Next up, kicker Robbie Gould roll to the battle behind him. One of the biggest concerns about the Cowboys roster right now is running back who is going to be the place kicker will be one all season will be fixated on. Tristan looks like Tano is season. currently set the battle Over. recently signed Considering standout right now. from the USFL for the NFL. Neither, is is neither of these two inspire much confidence heading into 2023, which is why Dallas should still leave no stone back to stone under him to find a better training camp or proven options to upgrade the position. The Cowboys don't like what they see. Things stand right now. Robbie Gould is the best kicker available at the open market. He's been one of the most reliable kickers in the league well throughout his career. Despite getting up there in an age with a few CPL injury line. concerns of the past season, he would no doubt be no no an upgrade in Dallas. However, he would be an excellent Cowboys back can't wait too long. They don't like what they see at the kicking position in training camp. Otherwise, Gould may slip their fingers. your thoughts? And finally, what do you think about the Cowboys surprise to many? Ezekiel Elliott. Tony Pollard coming off a season ending injury and taking on the always. Starting running back role to the battle behind him to become his primary backup. TikTok. Cowboys running back position heading into training camp. Let us know your thoughts. One, all eyes will be fixated on. Big D break. Pollard looks like a will be all last season. However, the channel, considering he's never been a full time starter in college or the NFL, this is a bit of concern. That makes the backup position behind him even more important. See you next time. The running back position will be heavily scrutinized throughout training camp and preseason. The Cowboys don't like what they see from the current options behind Pollard. It would be a wise to have a plan B in place. That backup plan could very well be a familiar face. Ezekiel Elliott. He may no longer be the running back he once was. However, he would be an excellent backup who would complement Pollard almost perfectly. That is all the topics we have for today. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about the Cowboys heading into training camp. What do you think the Cowboys will do this season? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, um, TikTok, and let us know your thoughts. Just find, uh, search Big D Breakdown. And as always, if you want to support the channel, go ahead, buy us a coffee at buymecoffee.com slash the Big D. As always, thank you so much for watching and listening. We will see you next time.